it? Any thoughts of going early, or are you going to stick? Yeah, we talked. That's something we talked about, but we we figured it'd be best to stay in our normal routine. Um, being that it's a short week, anyways, has its own set of challenges, and there's going to be a lot of. I'd say the majority of the week is going to be more jog through tempo. Uh, they might be able to have some live reps towards the end of the week, but just felt like it was best for us to stay in as normal as a routine as possible. Now you elected to receive yesterday or this weekend. Um, what goes into that? Do you just have a sense that you know you've got a good 15 or early script or something you really like early you want to get accomplished? I, I think it all. Every game's a little bit different. There's a lot of gut feel, I would say, in that. And um, I just think going, playing against a team like the Cowboys is as explosive as they've been offensively and then what they've been able to do defensively as well. Um, you know, I thought it was best in that particular game to try to manufacture a, a scoring drive, get up on them early, and um, our guys were able to go out there and execute. I saw how upset JJ was in the locker room. Did that injury turn out to be as serious as you guys thought? I have not talked to Flea yet, so I don't have confirmation on that. But just talking to him last night, uh, it didn't look good. And um, I'll tell you what, man, I can't say enough great things about him. Just and to see the growth from last year to this year, his contributions, not only on defense, but on teams as well. And I just love his play style, his relentless pursuit of the football. Uh, there was there's a number of examples in that game of just the physicality that we preach, the hustle to the ball. Um, but I'm confident it was you know it's he's got a lot of support here. Um, you know, le leaving after talking to him, he was back with the docs. You know, you walk outside the door and. There, there's um, RG, Preston, Van Ness, Rebs, all waiting there, right, right to go in and talk to him. And so those guys, those guys are all hurting for him. We're all hurting for him. He's he's come so far, and he he's a he's just shows up with the right approach, right attitude each and every day. So it is obviously very disappointing um, for him, for our football team that he's in this position. So what do you do for depth there? Obviously, you got Lucas, but you have to find snaps from the practice squad, or how do you kind of? Well, we got Cox on the on uh, oh, right. sorry, as time. well. Um, but yeah, it's going to be the next man up. That's just the mentality and the reality of the National Football League. And so, another guy gets an opportunity, and you know we'll see where we're at at the end of the week. Matt, what have you thought of what Lucas has given you? You know, the last month, just kind of the way yeah. he sort of stepped up. Yeah, I think he's really shown progress, and that's what you want to see from your young, your young players. I think the more he plays, the better he gets. Um, you look at how we're using him compared to how he played in college. It's, I mean, it's been a big learning curve for him, and it, I think I've said it many times, D-line, outside linebackers, there is a natural learning curve to play in that position when you go from college to the National Football League. Um, I think a lot of it is just in terms of the caliber of opponent, the player that you're going against down in and down out. And so, but I think Van Ness, um, the more he plays, the better he gets. Now, when Aaron Jones is playing at a level like this, how tough is it to stop him? He's one of the best. Um, his ability to put his foot in the ground, he, first of all, he's got great vision. Uh, his ability to break tackles, make people miss. And there were so many things that showed up when you watch the tape where some of those big plays that we were able to um, have explosives on in the pass game. I mean, he's saving the day in, in protection, whether it's somebody missing a block up front or him stepping up and, and picking up blitz pickup. Um, so, he, I mean, he impacted the game greatly. Your old line um, obviously did a good heck of a job last night. What was the key to the success? Obviously, Parsons has wrecked a lot of games. You guys kept him pretty long, Chip. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I think it's just the ability to try to keep him off balance where you're running the ball efficiently and then, you know, you can drop back. We, we tried to mix up some snap counts. Certainly, uh, I don't think 
you'd go into that game without ever um, not wanting to chip chip him a few times. We did a lot of things to try to disrupt his game with some of the cross-ups in the run game just to try to slow him down a little bit because he's so dynamic and they do such a great job of moving him all over the place. You never know where he's going to line up, right side, left side as a linebacker, um, over your centers or guard, or over your center, or over your guards. Um, so he was definitely a focal point going into the game and just in terms of the communication, where he's going to line up, and the, we had adjustments off of that. I don't know how many times you've used the words poise or even keeled with Jordan, but when we talked to him on Wednesday, somebody asked him, you know, this is different, this is the playoffs, and he was like, nope, I'm, I'll be the same. And I guess I listened to him and thought, all right, I've seen Mike Holmgren have to tell Brett Favre no rocket balls. I saw Rodgers throw a pick on his very first postseason pass. And Jordan was right. He was just the same. What is it like to be around him? And what did you see kind of in his eyes yesterday that he was he did not shrink from the moment one bit? Yeah, it, it felt the same to me. And uh, my only advice to him, and it's been this way, I would say, once we hit a certain spot during the season is just go out there and be aggressive. Trust what you see and let it rip. And I said, we're here now. You can't hold anything back. And I think he went out there and played exactly like that. And, um, you know, that cover zero play that, that he ripped that, that post to Wicks, I mean, that was, that was one of those plays that just you could sit there and watch that all day long. A lot. <laughs> Matt, Matt, what was your approach with him just from the start in the spring, and how has that sort of evolved as you guys have gone through the season together? How, how, how did you how did you do that? How, what pro approach did you take, and, and where where did you get to? I, I mean, I, I don't really know how to answer that, to be honest with you. It's the same approach that we do, I would say, every year. The thing that's been cool is to, to watch the evolution of his abilities like that, that zero play is a, a prime example of something that um, I know going into the year, just based on what happened in that KC game, we, we made a strong emphasis to, to make sure that we had answers for when people wanted to all out us. And a lot of those were in the form of cans, right? And, and when you're anticipating when you're going to get some of those, Certainly some game plans, it comes up a little bit more often than others, like when you're playing Minnesota or KC or some of these teams, New York. Um, and then there's some, some instances we knew it was, they were capable of doing it because we saw them do it versus Philly earlier in the year, but that wasn't one of the things that they majored in. So it's, it's time spent, value received. So you got to judge on how much time you want to, Put into that and for him to be able to get us into a max protection look mind you we didn't we could have blocked it even better and he would have had more time but for just the growth to be able to do that in a matter of just a few seconds to get Tuck to stay in on protection and um, to hang in there when you got a free runner at you I thought I just thought that was so impressive, and I think that's just uh, you know a great example of what he is, the growth that he's that's transpired with him. But your your whole approach, I mean, you hadn't necessarily had to do that with previous teams. So how challenging was that for you to say, hey, we got to strip it back and start over? Because it's, it's a different. I assume it's a different way that you had to do it. You know, the last couple of years, right? Yeah, because uh, you know previous seasons you don't worry about it as much um, but yeah I think that's one of the, that's our job right is to try to um, forecast potential issues and things that maybe are you're not as strong at in the moment and work on those so they become your strength and but it's a credit to the players because not every player can can do that I've been around a lot of quarterbacks that don't ever want to change the protection or um, just struggle with it, quite frankly. And just the amount of work that he's put in, you know, I, I've mentioned Tom so many times. I think Tom does an unbelievable job with him. It's great having 
uh, Steno around quite a bit with for some of these discussions. Um, but yeah, he, he's definitely, he always learns. That's the one thing I'll tell you about him is he learns from his mistakes and he learns from his successes. And he just, um, he just comes in with a great mindset every day. Hey Matt, um, maybe outside the building or nationally the perception is, you guys have arrived early, this is great, everything after this is gravy and cake. But tomorrow's never promised, right? You, you have an opportunity to kind of seize the moment. So how do you message that? Do you message that with these guys so they realize the opportunity that they now have that maybe was unexpected? I think we just continue to take it one day at a time and try to get better each and every day and attack it, the process the right way. And certainly we know we're going against one of the elite teams in the National Football League, certainly the, the class of the NFC. Um, they've got a lot of the same players that they've had for a few years now, and they've added some other freak shows over there. So we know it's a great challenge, but it's a great opportunity as well. And that's exactly how we'll approach it. Um, our guys would be, at the end of this thing, there's only one happy team, period. And um, so you got to approach it the same way each and every day. Like we're going, we're going out there to win a football game, and uh, we know it, we're, we're going to have to play our best ball. You've been around this league for a while. How impressed are you with how this offense has not just grown, but it seems like consistently grown, yeah, but that, that's kind of the expectation is you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You're never staying the same. And thankfully, our guys approach it the right way and uh, have a lot to prove and continue to push one another and have, have gotten better. And we're seeing that progress, and that's, it's fun to be a part of that. During that stretch against Tampa Bay and Carolina, there was a lot of talk about communication defensively. How has having Savage back the last three games helped with that aspect? Yeah, he's he's. An, I, I would say that's one of his strengths, is his ability to communicate. I don't care what sport you're playing. Um, if you don't have everybody, especially in our game, when there's 11 men on the field, you need 11 playing as one. And if you don't, it's, it's hard to play effective defense or offense or special teams, whatever it may be, whatever phase. So um, communication is a big part of it, and he does a great job with that. You know, about a month ago, we're asking you 100 questions about Joe and basically asking why you're keeping him. Um, what have you seen from him and the way that defense has bounced back the last three games of, I mean, I was talking about how much you played last night. Yeah, I, I I'm, could be happier. Um, just I, I know what Joe Barry's all about and just in terms of the resiliency and, um, you know, there was there's – there's tough moments, and there's tough moments in every season. I just I felt like I, kn I know what we have in him and um, was confident that if anybody could kind of right the ship, so to speak, it was him. Hey, Matt, going, going back to the offense for a sec, um, and I don't, I don't bring this up to irritate you, um, but you got a well, lot of it up. <laughs> no, I'm going to irritate you. Okay. Um, well, then you, you want to irritate me. Maybe a little. Um, All right. All training camp, we would irritate you with questions about we're going to see the, the map of Fleur offense, right? But when you have a veteran quarterback who has the cachet and everything that Aaron had, you did kind of meld it together and you called it our offense, right? But with Jordan, is this, I mean, there's guys running open all the time. Have you, have you been able to kind of run the offense the way you, when you were putting it together and getting ready to be a head coach and being an offensive coordinator, envisioned it, and now he's executing it at such a high level? Is that what explains? I mean, you guys put up 48 on yesterday. Our, our defense certainly contributed to, yeah. I would say, two of those scores. Sure. You know, Jair's pick and then Savage with the pick six. But, um, no, I, I think it's more – It's it's never about one guy. It's about – all 11 right and how do you use each piece and what do they do well and what are their strengths and trying to put people in the right position and certainly there's the element of who you're playing and how you want to attack certain people um, and I, I would say with that what concepts are we going to kind of hang our hat on throughout the course of the season and invest a lot of time in 
to that we're confident that we can dress these concepts up and go out and attack people. And, and you always want to have enough ammo um, when you're going into a football game. If, if somebody throws a wrinkle at you, you want to be able to have answers for whatever you are presented with. And so um, I think every year the offense, how you maybe have it installed with your whatever. You, some guys have six-day installs, seven-day installs, eight-day installs, whatever it may be. But there's an evolution to it. And I think we've done a pretty good job. Obviously, early on, it wasn't going, wasn't going great. Um, we've, we've tweaked a few things. And I, I think it's a, a real credit to our guys, our, our players, to pick up everything um, and just continue to work and grow and improve. And so I don't know if I answered your question, but, like, I don't know. Every year is a little bit different. Every offense is going to look a little bit different. I think there's core principles that and philosophical beliefs that, that don't ever change in terms of trying to, um, you know, present similar looks to defenses but have, play, you know, a lot of plays off of it so you can counteract some of the things that you're doing. Do you think you guys have hit a rhythm as a coaching staff on the offensive side of the ball? I mean, Nathaniel leaves, Luke leaves, and now you and Steno and everybody down the line. Do you guys feel like you've hit a rhythm as a group in terms of how you Absolutely. Start? I think our just our in terms of our process, there was any time you have turnover, I think that this is why so many people um, appreciate continuity, especially in our game, is because there's a learning curve to everything you do. And it, as a staff, um, how you game plan, um, how it all just how it all comes together is is a process i think you know there was a bigger adjustment than maybe we anticipated a while ago um, when we had a lot of turnover um, and i can't say enough about our offensive staff led by adam stenovich and but all the assistants and and their ability to contribute uh, each guy's got a specific area and i think they take it to heart and i mean they are the head coach of that area. And we sit down and we kind of brainstorm together and um, kind of try to piece it all together to, to make it marry the run game with the pass game. Um, formationally, making sure that we're uh, just not having glaring tendencies. Um, but all those guys, they, they, they take the initiative to have you know, the right stuff in whatever area they, they own. Sorry. You said uh, you want to go into the game, hope you have enough ammo. You seem to have a, you know, a wealth of ammo right now, but yesterday Jaden doesn't catch a ball. Christian has one. You still have this huge day. When you were back, in, when you were in game plan meetings and talking to defensive staff, when you were faced with a, an offense that had this plethora of weapons, what, what kind of pressure does that put on a defensive staff? Well, I think there's, it just depends. I think every staff's a little bit different in terms of how they want to defend you. And, um, you know, when you have a legitimate number one receiver that can wreck a game, uh, sometimes you may fudge your coverage to take that guy out of the game, whether it's double teaming him. Um, shoot, I remember, well, I mean, we, we've seen it here with Devontae. How many times did we see multiple people cover him and it frees up other guys? And I think it's harder to do when you're balanced and all these guys are getting targets and you don't know who's going to be that guy. The one thing I love about this group is I don't think they care who's that guy. I really don't. I mean, I was talking to Christian and Jaden Reed last night after the game and, I mean, you'd, you'd have thought they had 100 yards. I mean, they were so excited and... Um, it's a credit to the makeup of them and their unselfishness as teammates, and they get excited for one another. And when you have a group that is concerned about just winning football games and not necessarily how you get it done, uh, that is a lot of fun to work with. Because all these guys, one thing I, you got to appreciate, I mean, we all have our own personal wants and desires as people, and how do you set that aside for the betterment of the team? But I am a big believer of if 
the team has success, everybody will get rewarded for that and compensated for that. Along those lines, Matt, so how does, how does Rome have 150 yards yesterday? Um, is, is that, did you see something game plan wise that, that he was going to be the guy for the week? Or like he never had a 100 game yard game in his career until yesterday, and he's like wide open for most of those yards. Yeah, we just, uh, I mean, I told you guys last night the one specific play that we had been repping for a few weeks. It was like a 39-yard gain or something like that. Um, it just that that happened to be some of the plays that got dialed up, and he did a great job of executing. Uh, the throwback was big time. The sail route was big time. Um, he made some great, just strong hands catches um, in some critical situations. Obviously, the fourth down was was critical in, in the red zone, adjusting him and both the adjustment that he made and then Jordan to find him on that play. Uh, Cause obviously that wasn't necessarily the design to go to him. We were trying to get the ball to Tucker in the flat, but they defended it well. And um, yeah, Rome is just, I don't know. He, he's got, um, he's got a great work ethic, a great approach. And I love his mentality when that ball is in the air. I mean, he is going to snatch that ball. We've seen it time after time, just, the way he attacks the football in the air and has made a lot of big plays for us this season. So to Chris's question, does it just sort of happen then, whether it's Rome yesterday or Jaden the week before, that a big game just kind of happens just because it just happens? Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, it's, certainly I, I, there's a lot of thought in terms of where you're putting people on certain concepts and trying to play them to their strengths. Some guys run better routes than other guys. Um, that's just the way it is. And then you're also anticipating how the defense is going to, uh, you know, defend you. And um, if, if putting a guy in a certain spot, like sometimes when you go down in the red zone, a lot of defenses that we play will double team somebody. So then you look at, well, who's been catching the most red zone touchdowns? Are they going to put the double team there? So there's some, there's a little bit of a guessing game in that in terms of where you position people on the field. Um, but ultimately, they got to go out there and, and run the right routes, and uh, the quarterback's got to have the time to be able to go through his progression and and find the right guy. And I mean, that's and our guys are doing it at a good level right now.